So as a part of this, uh, we've been... You know, we did one program many years ago, I don't remember which year it was, must be 2004 or 5. Uh, we did one program in this direction. We did another one called uh, Anadi, which was more spiritually oriented, but a little bit of exposure to mysticism was there. Now in the month of March this year, I mean the 2021, uh, we are planning to do a eight-day event in India because this is a more cultural exposure, not necessarily mysticism, mysticism per se. It is a cultural exploration of mysticism. We will be doing a program called... Uh, I was not supposed to tell you. <laughs> they were supposed to make this program by invite only. But now this question has come, so we will be doing a program called uh, Shiva, the ultimate mystic, an exploration and little exposure to that dimension. It is a culturally rich program, it's a one-time program, we cannot repeat those programs because it's an elaborate cultural arrangement with lots of music, art, theater, everything mixed up and it costs a lot to prepare the yoga center for this because uh, last time, the last special event that we did like this was Mahabharat. When we did Mahabharat, everybody in the ashram were dressed like that period. The food was from that period. All the decor from that time, that is six thousand years ago, Hello? See, even I lose my battery eh, sometimes. <laughs> so from food to decor to clothing, everything was from that time and uh, the entire ashram was prepared for this. I think uh, those videos are partially out because uh, we must have shot nearly a hundred hours of video, but uh, at the little bit of it is out, I believe. Before that, we had a program called Leela. This was about how Krishna taught yoga. So because Krishna is supposed to be blue-bodied and everything about him is blue, 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 <laughs> Shiva also blue, all right <laughs> So, there was one blue day where people, we told everybody, please put on at least a spot of blue in your clothing. So most people came dressed up blue, the lighting was blue, all decor was blue, all flowers were blue, all the arrangements were blue. And when I op opened my mouth to speak, my tongue was blue. When they sat for lunch, the rice was blue color, everything blue. Then they were overwhelmed by this and they came out and there was blue smoke coming out of the mountain. <laughs> so I said, I'm just trying to tell you that this is the extent of elaborateness that we go to when we do these special programs. Only three we have done till now, Vaibhav Shiva, Leela and Mahabharat. This is the fourth one, this is called as uh, Shiva, the ultimate mystic. This is not that you are going to become a mystic, but some exposure to know that something exists like this, something beyond the framework of our logical minds, something beyond the sense of physicality that we have about this world, 
beyond this, how creation is, an exposure to this. Well, uh, considering the virus situations, only two hundred and fifty people will be taken into this program. I'm very sorry about that, but that is a requirement, otherwise we cannot conduct the program itself. So it'll be very culturally rich with music, dance, theater, variety of things happening, all with social distancing. So, uh, we want this program to be absolutely safe so that the numbers because of that, the numbers are limited and uh, well, it's a… it's a kind of an adventure because taking people through not mysticism per se, but even to expose them to something which doesn't fit into the framework of their psychological stuff or even physiological stuff because physical framework and mental framework are the only two things which is not allowing you to experience what's beyond this. The more seriously you take your physicality and your psychological structures, the more you become incapable of experiencing anything beyond. If you learn to relax this a little bit, that you… you don't take this seriously. Just yesterday somebody was asking me, Sadhguru, how do I not take my thoughts seriously? I said, just see that your… all your thoughts that you've generated till now have been absolutely stupid <laughs> Yes, because from the limited data that you've gathered, you're going on making up things about everything. The situation is like this. Suppose there is a million-piece jigsaw here. You found three pieces, you put them together and say, wow, it is a bear <laughs> Well, if you are a two-year-old child, we'll say, all right, it's a bear <laughs> Play with it. But if you're an adult and if you do this, we say you're dumb stupid, <laughs> yes or no? That's all that's happening with the logical mind. You pick a few pieces, those pieces may be sufficient for your survival, not for exploring existence, not for exploring creation, not at all. Simply not possible because with three pieces of jigsaw and it has millions of pieces is a ridiculous way to understand or to experience anything. These pieces that you have gathered are good for you to earn a living, manage your stuff around you, it's fine. But uh, if you just gather these trinkets and you think they're everything, you'll only end up with that, a warehouse of things. Yes, most people don't have a home, they have a warehouse. Hello? Many of you are living in a warehouse, isn't it? Because there is enough things there for fifty people, though there are only three people in the house. <laughs>